ماه 1401 جلسه نهم درس زمین آمار در خدمت عزیزان هستیم If I want to have a brief account of what we said for the last two or three session, that has something to do with how to prepare experimental, either directional or omnidirectional variogram as a function of separation distance. And it's quite important to differentiate between regular versus irregular space data. That's the very, the very first important thing to consider. And then, if you would like to go for the second step in NGO statistical analysis, say, variable modeling, at first you have to decide whether your data are vector based or raster based. That's the first item that you need to consider. As soon as you fix the nature of your data, say raster based data, then you have two possibilities. Fix the direction, say I would like to prepare experimental diagram for east-west direction or north-south direction or whatever direction and then try to prepare a number of registers that block extract a single number either measure of reliability or measure of similarity from each each scatter plot and then prepare a table where the first column is separation distance the second column is the experimental value if you would not like to go for experimental directional diagram, then you would extend your search to delineate pairs whose separation distance is H, 2, H, 3, H in any direction, and then prepare gamma as a function of separation distance for any direction. Today, I would like to give a brief account of the case when your data are vector-based, irregularly spaced, and then you would like to prepare experimental directional variogram for vector-based data. I prepared this, I extracted this from GS library, manual, and then convert it to PDF, share it with you through your email, this page. Let me raise the question. The question is, if your data are vector-based, that is, irregularly spaced data, and then you would like to answer this question, whether your data are isotropic or anisotropic. One way to decide whether your data are anisotropic or isotropic has something to do with preparing experimental variogram for a number of direction, overlay them on each other to see if they are the same. If they are the same, then you would say your random function is isotropic. If they are not the same, then your original random function is not isotropic. And I will allocate two or three sessions touching on anisotropic phenomena. How to treat anisotropy in geo statistics toward the end of the course. Today I would like to talk about the parameters where a program so-called GAMV in GS library require to prepare experimental directional variogram for irregularly space data. And if you have mobile on your system, you can retrieve this page on your mobile in case you can connect it to internet.
perhaps it might help to tell you what is given and what we are looking for. It's because it's quite important to have a general problem statement given. A single partial realization of a random function We are given a single partial realization of a random function, then we would like to make a decision on nature of anisotropy. Of course, it is up to you to make a decision on a Cartesian coordinate system when it comes to these data, because this SI here could be the x for 1D x and y for 2D, x, y and z for 3D. And of course, if you are talking about coordinate, then you should consider a Cartesian coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system or a spherical coordinate system. <coughs> uh, it is preferred to select your Cartesian coordinate system so that none of your points has negative either x or y coordinates. It should be in the first quadrant. It is up to you to make that decision. This is your uh, x1 corresponding to x and this is your x2 corresponding to y. And if it is 3D, then you have a third direction, and then you have a 4D problem. And then the parameters that you need to consider, you have a bunch of data on this first quadrant. And then you would like to prepare directional diagram, assuming that your data are irregular, vector-based. There is no organization in monitoring the study area. The very first item that you have to consider is the azimuth. The central direction where you would like to prepare directional value. Azimuth is the angle created between the direction of interest and north. And that is what you need to incorporate into GS library. The angle where your direction and the consideration will match with the north is called asymmetry. In GS library, this is denoted by A and G. There is a program so called Gamma V, customized to do the calculation of experimental directional or omnidirectional variable. And then you have to consider a region. Around this line, 
and limit your uh, delineation of data pairs allocated to this region. And the region is considered to be like this. All data allocated to this region will be considered for delineation of data pairs. As soon as you limit yourself to this data for preparing directional diagram in this direction, then the situation is going to be the same. You have to delineate the maximum separation distance. You have to limit your discretization of distance into two-thirds of this maximum separation distance. And then you have two possibilities to discretize this distance, either equal interval for which the number of pairs in each interval is going to be different, or you may have variable interval for which the number of pairs in each interval is going to be the same. And then try to use the summation that I introduced in my previous lecture to obtain the experimental diagram and when it comes to the separation distance you have five possibilities to compute the separation distance for each interval and then that will give you a table where gamma is a function of separation distance. The number of items that you need to consider here is this is a distance where you have to incorporate it into GS library and like tolerance X L T O L this is X T X L T O L which is the same as this and then you have another item so called tolerance A toll, which is from here to here. And it is denoted by A T O L. It is equal to twenty two. Or it can be given by you. This distance here maybe I'm talking about totally different things. Uh, banded speed, excuse me, this is this is not related to this. This is This distance here has to be totally different thing. This is the band bits and it is uh, denoted by B, A, N, D, W. And the numerical data given on this diagram concerned with the parameter file written in this uh, manual to tell you where you need to incorporate this data into your program. Band bits which is the same, and then here you have uh, x lag from, you have to perhaps discretize this into a number of interval in order to go ahead and find the experimental diagram in each interval. And then, when it comes to the first distance here from zero original of coordinate system up to, say, half of this distance, from here to here is called x lag 
and then perhaps from here to here if this is the typical interval for discretization then half of this distance is called x l t o n which means that the discretization is twice of this parameter and then from zero up to the first half or some por portion or percentage of this distance is called x lag and it is in this diagram it is 4 this is 4 and this is 2 and I'm quite sure that if you look at the page on GS library the manual you would uh, explore some other parameters where you have to fix this region and then as soon as you fix this region you are ready to go for computation of experimental diagram. Either your data is regularly based or your data is irregularly based or you would like to go for directional or only directional diagram. The end result is going to be a table. And this table is H, comma, H. The end result is going to be this table. In my previous lecture, I brought an example of a PhD student where after six months he referred to me saying, Mr. Abedini, I am getting negative volumes. What should I do? And I asked him whether he did consider fitting a theoretical diagram to his experimental diagram or not. And he all of a sudden said, no, I did work with this table instead of working with theoretical diagram. Now, the question is, if you are given this table, this is experimental diagram. Experimental variables. Either directional or omnidirectional. At first, you have to consider these data to be corrupted by nodes. And you know why these data are corrupted by nodes. Because you have five possibilities for this. And this column is highly connected to your decision on nature of discretization, directional, in the omnidirectional diagram and so on because of the nature of these data on these two columns where they are highly corrupted by noise if you want to go for estimation using this table sooner or later you are going to get negative variance and negative variance in geostatistics is a total disaster raw variance cannot be negative at most, variance is zero. Where the variance is zero? When your data are the same. When every data has the same numerical value, then the variance of this data is zero. If there are variability in your data, then variance is going to increase. The more your data are variable, the higher the variance is going to be. Therefore, you have to consider fitting a closed form function to this curve.
Here, I would like to introduce the three type of variables. The very first type of variogram is theoretical variogram. Then, regional variogram, then experimental variogram. Then this has to be in lowercase letter as well. 
if you denote this by by uppercase letter, then this W has to be written in capital letters. This is our second example. And we realize that for this second example, you could easily prove that your random function is a stationary. And your covariance function R as a function of separation distance H If you remember, is can you check Mrs. Boraja to see if this is the same? R sub H is equal to one over two cosine of separation distance. Two pi times h. Again, this h here is equal to x i minus x j. Is to press 
the bottom on your pocket calculator, convert it to a uniform number between 0 and 2 by plug it here and that will give you a realization. Repeat this process for another uniform random number between 0 and 1, convert it to 0 to 2 by plug it here, you are going to get a new realization for your random function. But in real life, you have only one single realization. Therefore, in real life, we do not have access to theoretical covariance function or variable function. Time is limited, money is limited, labor is limited. If you look at these three types of variable here, and you would like to define it in your own care, theoretical diagram could be delineated if you do have access to your random function, close form function for your random function. But since you do not have access to your random function in close form, then you do not have access to theoretical variables. What do we mean by regional variables? If you have a chance to monitor every point in a space, which means time is not limited, money is not limited, labor is not limited, then you could delineate regional variogram having data at this point in space. In a sense, this is another way of talking about the theoretical variogram. When look at this 1D random function, you could decide where you would like to have a numerical value for y. Assuming that your inherent randomness is freeze, then all you need to do is to plug a numerical value for x, compute the sign of this argument here. And that will give you a numerical value for your random function. Regional diagram could be delineated if you have numerical value for your random function at every point in a space, which means that you could have access to close form function for random function to be able to have access to your numerical value of random function. This is not accessible, regional diagram. So, can I get a if time is not limited, if money is not limited, if labor is not limited, in that case you could monitor every point in a space, physically. If you do have access to your random numerical value of your random function at every point in a space, then you could go ahead and obtain the regional value. But in real life, we have not, we do not have that scenario. We do not have that scenario where time is not limited, space is not limited, money is not limited, and labor is not limited. In fact. This regional diagram is a bridge connecting experimental diagram to theoretical diagram. It is not accessible. And this one is accessible only when your random function is given in close form. In real life, you could delineate experimental variable where we talked about this in our two previous lectures. And that is the table associated with experimental variable. It's going to be a simple question in care fitting to connect theoretical variable to experimental variable. If you go back to your course so-called numerical analysis in 
Bachelor of Science. In that course, you are familiar if you are given a table on X versus Y. You are familiar how to prepare a closed form function for Y as a function of X. And as soon as you delineate a closed form function connecting X to Y, then if you are given X, you can plug it into your relationship to find Y. Just very similar to what we are planning to do here. Here is a book written by Bart. I prefer two copy of this book from your library, you prepare, Ge Geological Science Department. It was written in 1974. And the title of this book is Nonlinear Parameter Smish. In fact, the reason that I am familiar with this book has something to do with the course which I took in my PhD, Optimization. In that course, I did not take, took it for credit, but like Mr. Zoyri, I took it for audit, just audit that course. And the person who taught that course was from the Department of Mathematics not from our own engineering school. In that course, I became familiar with this guy, and I do have the electronic copy of this book. I can share it with you. And the title of this book is Nonlinear Parameter Estimation. If you start to read this book, in your first chapter, this author argued that if you want to find closed form function for connecting y to x, you have two degrees of freedom. Please pay attention to these two degrees of freedom. If you want to connect y to x, you have two degrees of freedom. How to define a mathematical function to connect y to x. This is not unique. The second degree of freedom that you have concerned with measure of goodness. If That is your x-axis, that is your y-axis, and you map your data for x versus y on your first quadrant, you are going to have a series of data. These are your data points. Please pay attention. When I'm talking about y versus x, that means I'm talking about comma versus h. They are the same. But you are more familiar with y versus x as opposed to gamma versus h. Two degrees of freedom. How could it be possible to choose a mathematical formula to connect y to x. That is the first idea of it. There's a program so-called Easy Fit. No, not Easy Fit. Paper check. You can 
easily search for this program in your Google search. In table chair, you have 3,000. 3,000 mathematical models. If you introduce your data to table care, it will search among these 3,000 mathematical model to see which one is going to be more appropriate for your data. And then the second degree of freedom that you have has something to do with measure of goodness. If you remember one of my PhD students who defended his thesis very recently, Mr. Sharkov. At first I raised a question for another PhD student whose name is Mr. Donishwood, is the son of Mr. Donishwood Experimental Laboratory. City. I raised a question for him that I have no answer for this question. He defended his thesis but did not answer that question. Mr. Sharpov also defended his thesis but did not answer that question. And I will raise it for you today to see if you can find the answer for that question. And that question has something to do with those two degrees of freedom, as well as independent data versus free from error data. I will talk about that question here because at first when I decided to introduce the student, the examining committee, and the title of his thesis, I raised that question and it is in my operat, the defense session, and I will raise it for you today to see if you have some interest in that question. And I even raised this question for Professor Gilbert Strine, Department of Mathematics, MIT University. And uh, he decided to say, no, I have no answer for this question. And it's a quite simple, that question, by the way. Not a complicated question. But let me tell you what do I mean by degree of freedom. The first degree of freedom that you have has something to do with mathematical model. Which mathematical model should be connected to this data? The second degree of freedom that you have has something to do with measure of goodness. What do I mean by measure of goodness? If your mathematical model is a linear relationship, then how could it be possible to delineate this linear relationship? You have a variety of choice to make this decision. Please pay attention. I fix my mathematical model linear and I would like to go ahead and find a relationship for y versus x. As simple as this. I would like to obtain A and B given a table for Y versus X. I fix the mathematical model and I would like to address what do I mean by measure of goodness. If you want to decide on measure of goodness, you have to make a decision on these three scenarios. The first scenario is to say X is not corrupted by noise, but only Y is corrupted by noise. In that case, what you need to do is to obtain these distances, the square them,
if you ask me what are these distances, I would say from here to here is y r. That is what you observe. And from here to here is what you compute. And if you subtract this from this, you are going to get error. And if your voice is corrupted by noise, what you need to do is to obtain A and B is to minimize some of the square error. Your objective function is going to be A, F as a function of A and B, and this is summation I from 1 to N, N is the number of data, epsilon I to the power of 2. That is one possibility. If your X is not corrupted by noise, and your Y is corrupted by noise, all you need to do is to square these little distances, sum them up, and then try to minimize F. By the way, I was wondering whether you are familiar with this or not. These are from Master of Science, not even Master of Science. Yes, sir? Yes, definitely. Good. So the residual is not residual. Yes. 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 It's quite interesting for you. I took a course in groundwater hydrology with a professor in University of Guelph. Out of my surprise, and out of your surprise, he did not know that if you want to find A and B, you have to make a decision whether your X or Y or both are corrupted by and even he did not know that if Y is corrupted by noise but X is not corrupted by noise is the same as the case when Y is not corrupted by noise but X is corrupted by noise. He thought for both cases you are going to get the same A and B. Definitely wrong. If X is corrupted by noise but Y is not corrupted by noise what you need to do is to find these distances square them and then try to minimize the, uh, the, the obtained function which means you have to write it this way And then define an objective function G as a function of C and D to be equal to summation I from 1 to N. And in order not to confuse it with epsilon, let me call this a thumb. This is desired. Again, from here to here is xi. From here to here is x hat i. And x hat i minus xi is going to be eta i. It's quite interesting for you to acknowledge the fact that if you convert this to this, you are going to get x equal to what you need to do 
is to divide both sides by A I just bring this on the other side, divide both sides by A You are going to get the same C equal to A1 over A and B equal to minus B over A only if please pay attention only if your data points are located on the line itself if I see شما اگر چنانچه برید این مسئله رو حل کنید یا برید این مسئله رو حل بکنید رابطه بین سی مسای یک روی ای و دی مسای منهای بی روی ای درسته به شرطی که تمام نقاط روی خط باشد اگر چنانچه تمام نقاط روی خط نباشد سی با یک روی ای برابر نیست و دی با منهای بی روی ای برابر نیست The third goodness of fit criteria is to assume that both X and Y are corrupted by noise. Which is the case here. Both your X and your Y are corrupted by noise. But, please answer this question. If you manage to delineate a single paper, please pay attention. If you manage to delineate a single pen paper in literature to assume that both H and Gamma are corrupted panels. In conventional literature that you and me have access to, assume that H is not corrupted by this, and only Gamma is corrupted by this. If both X and Y are corrupted by noise, then neither epsilon I nor eta I has to be considered. Neither epsilon I nor eta I. But these distances. So epsilon set to be beyond set to be understood. I mean. اگر اپسایلون سفر بشه بی هم سفر میشه ایجا اگر اتا سفر بشه در واقع دی سفر میشه درسته؟ What do you mean by اپسایلون to be zero? اپسایلون for every point? آره every point های نقاط هستن Which means that the data are located on a line آره دیر بی سفر میشه درسته؟ No In that case C is equal to 1 over A D is equal to minus B over A If your data are located on a line خطه دی از مرده هم یاد خواسته نو این در کس you have to have a point zero and zero on your data set in order to be passing through origin it may happen that in your data there is no point zero and zero I wish I offer a course on linear and non-linear regression analysis for a semester. Not for a single session, but for a semester to talk about these things. Because it is quite important. Every student in every discipline, one way or another, needs to know this. The third possibility is to consider the case where both X and Y are corrupted by noise. In that case, I will use this color to show that you need to have a perpendicular line and try to minimize the sum of the square of this distance. Uh, this is eta, this is Epsilon, let me call this Kisai. If both X and Y are corrupted by noise, then this is FGH as a function of E and F 
has to be equal to summation i from 1 to n, kisa i to the power of 3. In this case, your x is not corrupted by noise, but y is corrupted by noise. In this case, x is corrupted by noise, but y is not corrupted by noise. In this case, your model is either Ex plus F. Even, please pay attention, I limit myself to linear relationship, not 3000 mathematical model. And then you have this possibility. The, third, the fourth possibility, can you imagine what would be the fourth possibility? For goodness of fit criteria. So, is there a color model? Pardon me? This is a function. This is an operator. This is a function for which it has two arguments. H is a function. It has two arguments. E and F. It's a function. Are you familiar with F of X? Now, X is not your independent variable. Here, your independent variable is A and B. C and B, B and F. The fourth goodness of fit criteria is considered to be Chebyshev criteria, where you will try to delineate maximum departure, and again you have three possibilities for that maximum departure. Maximum departure from for epsilon i, or maximum departure for eta i, or maximum departure for chi psi i. I, I try to minimize this maximum departure. In literature, it is called minimax problem. Chebyshev. You will delineate maximum epsilon i and you will find A and B to minimize this maximum epsilon i. You will delineate maximum eta i and you will minimize maximum eta i. You will delineate maximum psi i and then you will minimize maximum psi i to obtain either A and B, C and D, D and F, and so on. This is called Chebyshev criteria. In those two courses, 
you might be interested to dig further into history of this earthquake. Can you imagine at early stage what happened to this earthquake? At early stage, instead of raising it to the power of two, they will try to find A and B by summing absolute value of epsilon i. Trying to get rid of the negative sign by taking absolute value. But sooner or later, they decided, oh, absolute is not a good sign for minimization. How could it be possible to obtain A and B if the objective function is to minimize the summation of absolute epsilon r? Can you imagine what would happen? And then, gradually, they change absolute value to epsilon to the power of two. As soon as you replace this epsilon i with this, f sub a is going to be summation i from 1 to n, and then you have to put y hat i minus y i to the power of 2. It really doesn't matter whether you put y sub y minus y hat r or vice versa. Because as soon as you raise it to the power of 2, the minus sign will cancel out. And then you could replace this y hat of i with a x of i plus b minus y sub i because that is what you will compute. And then you have an objective function where you have no i, no degree of freedom on x, y, and y, r, which is what you observe, and all you need to do is to play it numerical values of a and b to minimize f. Partial value of f, which is related to a, has to be zero, and partial derivative of f with respect to b has to be zero. And that will give you look at and see how I'm going to take partial derivative of f with respect to a. These two will come front of the parentheses and then I have to take partial derivative of this with respect to A which is going to be a sub half and then I have to multiply it by the same parentheses with one power less
and then it comes to this one xi times a plus n times b equal to and of course i has to go from 1 to n for every summation two equation with two answers today i would like to prove this two relationship using matrix notation and then gradually move to nonlinear regression can you tell me why should i should go to nonlinear regression instead of linear regression you are thinking about this one yes The mathematical relationship is this, then you have to use the same procedure to write down two equations with two items for C and D and solve the linear system of simultaneous equation. If you want to play with this soon or late, you will be confronted with PCA principal component analysis when your independent variable as well as dependent variable is corrupted by noise then sooner or later you will run into principal component analysis and this is a very important topic very attractive topic Mr. Sharpa worked with supervised principal component analysis but if you want to avoid Working with transcript component analysis, what you need to do is to obtain these PSI i in terms of A and B, and then try to follow the same procedure that you have for either F or G, and obtain E and F when X and Y is corrupted by noise. Now, I would like to. Obtain these two relationship using matrix notation. How? If that is your model, then you can write this as observed value of y can be written as that is how to relate relate conflict value with observed value. This part is y hat x i and this is epsilon i. If I want to be more specific on i from a to n then I have to replace I with 1, I with 2, I with 3, and so on, and see what will happen. Y sub 1 is equal to A, X1, 
plus b plus epsilon 1. And then when it comes to y2, y2 is equal to a x2 plus b plus epsilon 2. Keep going, yn is equal to axn plus b plus epsilon n. Could it be possible to write this system in matrix form? Why not? And uh, I have to add this is let me write it in different colors. This is going to be a matrix of n by one and rows one color. This is going to be n by 2, n rows and 2 colors. And this is going to be 2 by 1, 2 rows and 1 color. And that's going to be n by 1. And of course, every component should be n by 1. You see? n by 2, 2 by 1, you can come n by 1. Could it be possible to write this in matrix 4? Yes. It could be written as epsilon as a vector is equal to matrix A n by 2 times unknown x. What should I write here? This, what should I write here? This vector can be denoted by S. for which we are looking for this is. And that is plus equal to vector one. That is how to represent this system. Vector psilon plus A times S equal to one. Therefore, epsilon will become y minus a s. Now, from statics, or whatever course you have at your Bachelor of Science, you know that the dot product of these two vectors, epsilon dot epsilon, will give you the sum of the square of epsilon. Let me come here. Epsilon dot epsilon dot product of two vectors is equal to epsilon transpose epsilon.
Would it be possible to check whether this will give you a number? Why not? This epsilon is n by 1, n row 1 by. This is 1 by n. And then if you multiply 1 by n by n by 1, you are going to get 1 by 1. You may for now. What is the new value of epsilon transpose? This is epsilon, and then you have to put y minus. A S transpose times Y minus A S. And then you are going to have Y transpose. When it comes to A times S, it will become S transpose A. And you have to multiply this by that. Minus minus S transpose A transpose times Y. Then when it comes to this one, it will become plus S transpose A transpose A S. These two terms are the same. Why? These two terms are the same. The reason why these two terms are the same is this. Remember that if you have a number like 2, 2 is the same as 2 transpose. Okay? Here you have a number. If you take transpose of this, you will can find this. Because transpose of this becomes transpose A transpose Y. Therefore, these two are the same. You can either write two times this or two times this. Therefore, epsilon to the power of two which is epsilon transpose times epsilon. And of course, I use Einstein notation to represent this. It's equal to S transpose A transpose A S minus two times S transpose A or better to say Y transpose A S plus 
y transpose y. And that's going to be your objective function, f as a function of s. This s is basically a and b. This vector, if you remember, I call this vector to be a and b. And then I introduce book, so-called bar. In your first appendix of this book, you will become familiar with uh, matrix algebra. How to take partial derivative of this f with respect to vector s. If you want to check whether I'm doing something right or wrong, after obtaining vector s, I should collapse that relationship to what I have here. Could it be possible to have a trace of s here? Why not? show you that this matrix here is A transpose A. This matrix here. What is A? This is G. And this is S. And when it comes to this one, will be by the way this matrix here is n by n because a transpose is first this n is as you can see here n by 2 And this A transpose is 2 by N. Excuse me, this will be 2 by 2. If you multiply this by this, you are going to get the 2 by 2 matrix. And then if you multiply this 2 by 2 matrix by 2 by 1, you are going to get 2 by 1. And then here, I have to have a 2 by 1 matrix. Let me see. If I put A transpose Y, what will happen? A transpose is what? 2 by N. And this Y is 2 by 1. Excuse me, N by 1. And then if you multiply this, you are going to get 2 by 1. Now, how would it be possible to obtain this relationship here? Partial derivative of f is respect to s. Partial derivative of this quadratic form is a transpose a s and 2. How could it be possible to connect this to this? first appendix of this chapter, this book, minus the partial derivative of this with respect to S is 
going to be 2 times A transpose Y. And you have to put this equal to 0. Divide both sides by 2, you will have A transpose A times S equal to A transpose Y. Which is the same as what we have out there. Vector S, which is A and B, is equal to A transpose Sodom, should you use that? No. You cannot. So? What do you write this way? If you want to find S, what you need to do is to multiply both sides by inverse of A transpose A to the power of minus 1 times A transpose times 1. Let me see if I replace these with their counterpart to see how I can find that one. be the value of A transpose. A transpose is this 2 by I have to have x1, x2, up to xn, and then 1, 1, up to 1. This is A transpose. Okay? And then I have A. X1, X2, Xn. This is A transpose times A. And then you have to multiply this by S. And you have to make it equal to A transpose X1, X2, Xn, 1, 1, 1 by Y1, Y2, Y, N. Let me see if it is okay. 2 by N, N, N by one. 1. Okay? Nice. You have to multiply this. Some shapes. Please pay attention. You have to multiply this row by this column to obtain the first entry of a 2 by 2 matrix. If you multiply this by this, you are going to get summation of x to the power of 2. If you multiply this by this, you are going to get summation of x bar. If you multiply this by this, you are going to get summation of x bar. If you multiply this by this, then.
درس خوندن رو دارم سیره جان خطی هم آزم کنم من اینجا متوجه نشدم که فیلم اون پاشده افت پاشده اسو گرفتیم گفتم یه تابع هدف دارم که دیگری آف فریدم هم اون چیزایی که میتونم باش بازی کنم که نهایتا اف کمینه بشه یه باید کمینه بشه باید بیا مشتق اف نسبت به اس بگیرم خود اف یک سکیل فانکشنه ولی آرگومنتش بکتوره مشتق اف رو باید نسبت به اس بگیرم خب توضیح دادم گفتم یه رفرنس اینجا داخل این مجموعه که دارید منم الکترونیکش دارم مال بارد هست اپندیس یک این میان میگیم مثلا اگر یک وکتور فانکشن داشتید و خاصی نسبت به یک وکتور مشتر بگیرید نتیجهش چی میشه اگر یه اسکیل فانکشن داشتید نسبت به یک وکتور خاصی مشتر بگیرید چی میشه البته ما تو قسمت استیمیشن خیلی از این اپندیس استفاده میکنیم خیلی کرار استفاده میکنیم البته نیست همینجا من یه سوال کنچکاوانه از من رو میداد رجب زاده بورسم این درسه راحت تری و ریاضیات آن مهندسی این بهتره خب یه خبر خوشحالی برای شما از پس اون رو پشت سر گذاشته ایشون خیلی حجم زیاد حالا به نظر میاد شاید نمیدن حالا این تکیه که اینجا مشتقی میگرفتم برای ایشون سوال پیش اومد که چرا مشتق این میشه این یه داستان فوقلادهی پاش چیزی که من توسیم میدونم خب اگر ما بخونی هست متوجه میشه بله بله متوجه میشه فقط در بارده این من میتونستم هم اینجوری بینیستم ایش هم میتونستم اینجوری بینیستم ایش S transpose A transpose Y هر دوتاش درسته منطقه مشتق که دارم میگیرم به جایی که این بذارم اینو گذاشتم یه زنی به اینو گذاشتم یه ترنس بوزوهای گذاشتم و بعد طرفه به یه رو تقسیم کردم این به دست آمده به استدلال کردم گفتم اینا دو تا یه مطلب هستم منطقه از طریق ماتریسی و این یکی از طریق جبری این محفظی رو من توی حالا مندس امیر احمدی مقدار ممکنه با این مرموز باشه ولی این تو ترم قبل قد کابر کردم ترم قبل این کابر نکردم مفصل تو جبر خطی پیش رفته ما در رابطه با این ولی پرابلم صحبت میکنیم اینو میگم برای بعض از دوستان که این مقدار نقبال شکار موضوع هستن یه مبحثی توی جبر خطی هست سینگولار ولیو دیکامپوزیشن توی آپارات یک از در سال کامل به سینگولار ولیو دیکامپوزیشن اختصاص داده شده و در مقایسه با آیگل ولیو پرابلم محاسن زیاد داره این ماتریس A چون میدونید آیگل ولیو پرابلم فقط مخصوص ماتریس مربعیه فقط نفس مربعی در ما چون میتونیم سخن از مقادی رو مشخصه بزنیم آیدیو تو سیدیان سه تو وجوبه داره میگه اعداد جادوی آیه ملیوس بردارهای جادوی آیه بیتوکس توابه جادوی آیه فانکشنس اسم این حال بودشته اعداد جادوی بردار جادوی واقعا هم جادو میکنه جادوگری میکنه این پی سی ای که اینجا گفتم یه سر قضیهش با هایین ولی و پرابلم برگرد من توی این روز ساعت باقی مونده سوالی که هم برای دکتر دانشمند دانش بود هم برای دکتر شهر باف تولید کردم و کمان کنم وقت وقت ندارم این وقت بده کنم خود من برم دنبال پاسورش خدمت رو معرفی می کنم اینها رو یک زمینه آماده کردم یه مقداری میخواستم به مرگ بزنم که به تبرازی بشید از اون از به مرگ بزنم به تبرازی بشید یعنی هم اونجا رو شروع کنم ریاضی رو بگم که یه مقداری بهتر تحقیب میکنید هم اونجا رو بدم که تحقیب بشید به این کتابه مراجعه کنید 
و بعد روز آینده که میشه شنبه هفته آینده باید برم برای این جدبری که خدمتون دادم شروع کنم صحبت کنم این هم هم چیلی به این من یه تا بفید کنم متاسفانه این جهنه مثلا داکیومنتی که خدمتون داریم یه بار دیگه این داکیومنت رو نگاه کنید تو برش میخواید شنبه حتماً این داکیومنت رو حتماً باید بیرید این داکیومنتی که خدمتون دادم عنوانش هستش وریوگرم دات پی دی اف که آمدن تو صفحات مختلفش وریوگرم رو مختلف رو دادم مثلا به نه همون صفحه اولیش که گوسیان وریوگرم هست تولیدی کار گوسیان وریوگرم هم هستش یک ذریبی رسم سیگما تو در یک منهای اکسپوننت منهای اچ دو به هل دو این اصطلاحات به این میگن تولیتیکال گوسیان برگرم یا تون از خودتیم سه نو داریم این تولیتیکال گوسیان برگرم ما یه صدیب داریم میخوام به این فیدش کنم میشه یه خطی کنیم؟ نه یه غیر خطی حالا خانم مهد زاره میگه های خواه بدینیم این چه غیر خطیه از چه دیگاه غیر خطی؟ استاتیستیکال یا نگرش سیستمی چی بود نگرش سیستمی؟ گامای اچ از منظر نگرش سیستمی خانم زمان ولی رشم زده با دیگه بدون حتما خیلی الان از آماری که کنم این هم اگر گاما که روی چه سر میکنه اگر چنان چه شما بتوانید اینو به نیست های یو به اضافه به تایید اگر این هم اگر گاما خطی باشه باید بتوانی این رو به نیستی آلفا گامای ویو به اضافه بتا گامای چی؟ اگه بتونیم عملگر گاما خطی این منظر نگرش سیستمیه برای خطی بودن یک عبارت از منظر آماری این رابطه غیر خطیه چون گرافیکال رپریزنتیشن گاما از فانکشن آف اش هم تو که میبینید چیه؟ غیر خطی خطی نیست یه خطیش نمتونید بذارید ادامهش از دو طرف بدید غیر خطی این رابطه هم از منظر نگرش سیستمی هم از منظر نگرش آماره غیر خطی خب اگه غیر خطی بود اگر ما خواستیم این بین فیت بکنیم این داده ها رو بین فیت بکنیم که این چیک مثل این نمتونیم عمل بکنیم نمتونیم بگیم که شروع میکنیم از این مشتق میگیریم نسبت میدونیم پارامتر ای و بی ما چی هستن اینجا به یه رنگ دیگری دورش خط بکشم بگم که پارامتر ای و بی اون چیه این پارامتر ای اون هست این هم پارامتر بی اون هست ای و بی مجازه بدید این چند دقیقه من به این مطلب رو احساس بدم و همه گیر خدا بسم یه سوال فاقد پاسخ یه مدلی داریم وای مسای با سمیشن ای آی اکس آی به اضافه ای زیر آیا مزید داریم حتی از غیر خطیش هم نکرد یه ماتریسی هم داریم که آمدیم عملا بگیم اکس یک اکس دو اکس این و بعد هم وای آمدیم حالا برای که این اینه هم با این اینه که بعد میذارم تفاوت بکنه این میذارم پی این من پیت متبهیر مستقل دارم 
و این سطح هم داده داره رفتم یه پدیده ای دارم که اون پدیده به این تو متقیر مستقل وابسته است رابطه بین ایندیپندنت وریبل و دیپندنت وریبل هم خطیه این داده ها هم جمع کردم میخوام برم این سرای به تا S تا AP رو برای چهار تو گذینه به دست بیارم زراغه به A0 تا AP رو برای چهار تو گذینه به دست بیارم این چهار تو گذینه چجوری تولید میشه که بر بریم خودشون چیچی ها میشن دو تو کانسپت رو باید با هم ترکیب بکنم که چهار تو گذینه تولید میشه و شما الان دیگه باید متخصص شده باشید تو ترکیب کردن این کانسپت ها برای تولید گذینه اولین این هست که این ضرب ایکس آی ها ایکس ایکس و ایکس ایکس ها آیا مستقل نست همه یا با هم همه هست میگیرم پس اونا باید این دیپنند ویرسیز این دیپنند آیا اکس یک، اکس دو، اکس سه تا اکس پی مستقل از همان یا با هم هم هستیدن اگر مستقل از هم باشن شما برید واریانس و واریانس میتریکس این ماتریس این در پی رو دست بیارید باید در اگونال بشید اگر مستقل از هم باشن و اگر چنان چی وابسته به هم باشن این واریانس که واریانس میتریکسی ما تیسه این در پی این سر پی ستون آفتای اگرانال ایلمنت ها که کوواریانس هستن قدر میشه آفتای اگرانال میشن کوواریانس اونه که رو قدر هستن میشن واریانس این اولی مطلب کانسپت دوم خوشبختانه همانی ایجاد کردم این از که آیا این اکسایی ها کرابتر بایدونس هستن یا فری اگرانال همیشه هم باید کرابت باید نمیسه فری فرام ایرور ویرسیز کرابت سه 
एक से और और फोर लेटेड एंड थ्री फ्रॉम इट Right, so I have to write it down again. 